as it are than me, they will inherit the earth. <laughs> but, but how come most of us don't know that we, we own it? We have, the, we have the millions, or walk in the millions. Well, I don't, listen, I need to clarify to some viewers our lifestyle. We actually have a simple lifestyle. I have an old, a 10-year-old car out there, okay? And we live in a rented house, and this is my one suit. <laughs> wow. But it, that, that's, a, that's a lifestyle choice. I mean, if I wanted a brand new car, I'd buy it tomorrow morning. If I wanted two brand new cars, I'd buy it tomorrow morning. If I want to buy a house, I'd buy it tomorrow morning. It's, not, it's, not, it's a lifestyle choice that I choose to live a simple life, okay? It doesn't, it's no reflection on what we can afford. See? The thing is, everybody's chasing after the latest, latest and greatest. This is a 1299 watch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because I don't want an Omega because, you know, this, is, this works right. It's got a nice big face and I can see it. <laughs> Super. I like your style. <laughs> but, you know, we don't need all these toys. We don't need all, we're not going to be here much long. We're going to heaven soon. The rapture's going to happen in life, our lifetime, your lifetime, my lifetime. We're all going to heaven soon. I've got a beautiful home in heaven, so are you. We don't need all the trappings down here. It doesn't matter whether you rent a house or own a house. It all belongs to the Lord anyway, doesn't it? Of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, tell me, you know, like, I thank God for the short testimony, the testimony you just shared with us about mm. yourself. Yeah. Relying on God, yeah. obeying God, sure. and then seeing the manifestation of the, of, the, of the glory of God in your life in terms yeah. of finances and everything. Yeah. But how, you know, what, what is it that Christians are missing out on? Are they not being taught well or they don't understand what is what? Because we're not seeing Christians really walk in the kind of uh, prosperity that you're talking about. No, I know we're not, and I don't know why either. All I can tell you is we were bankrupt we didn't know where to turn. And, and God clearly spoke to us. He said, go and travel, set up a charity, travel all over the world and give everything away free. Now, we, we have a DVD player now, a DVD machine, and it prints 100 DVDs at a time. And they go all over the world now. But it's not just that. Our charity, I'm not about to talk figures, but just to give you an idea, our charity supports uh, prisoners in the largest prison in Asia. We have orphanages we support in the Philippines and Indonesia and India. Uh, we're involved with Revelation TV, which is fantastic. It's the best television program in the United Kingdom. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I agree with you totally. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're involved with um, we're involved with uh, ch kids in India having it paying for their eye operations. We're involved with charities in Israel. We're involved with Tear Fund, helping their uh, earthquakes and famine and disaster things. We support missionaries around the place. Um, and the more the more we support the more God gives so that we can support more because this isn't our ministry, it's God's ministry. God wants to support the prisoners. God wants to support the Revelation TV. God wants to support the, or the orphanages and the, and the charities in Israel and the sight savers in India and all these other things. I keep getting more requests and I just said, look, you know, we need to do a bit more. And, and you know, do you know, there's more money going through our charity every month, every year. About every year, there's more money going through our charity than the year before. <laughs> you know, I, I, I really thank God for your life because yeah. you're saying that you just got the suit, a 10-year-old car, and yet your ministry is doing you know, some serious work but it's overseas. But it's not because I can, I can, it's, you know, I can, I can put two brand new cars. That's not a problem. I understand. You know, it's I, just that you I don't put a lot of store in toys. Super. <laughs> but then why is it that there are so many Christians struggling with their finances? Well, yeah, is there something that you know that they don't know? What, what, what's happening? Well, it's not, no, there's nothing, it's nothing secret. You know, on our website, it's called freechristianteaching.org. There's a whole lot of stuff about money because we're not going to be able to get through it all. <laughs> but just get onto our website, freechristianteaching.org. There's a whole lot of teaching on money. But we'll probably put this on as well, actually. That's right. um, I'm, I'm going to do a, set, a conference on money um, down where I live with Roger French, who's my pastor, very soon. And that's going to be recorded. Uh, this is an important subject. Uh, I don't think it's taught properly because, you know, you look at, look at the Old Testament, all the great guys in the Old Testament, all the great guys in the Old Testament, Moses, Abraham, Solomon, David, they were all wealthy guys, weren't they? Yeah. And let's talk about Jesus. Was he poor or was he rich? You answer. He was rich. Of course he was. Yeah. Yeah, he was really well. I mean, he had, let's talk about Jesus for a minute. He was given gold when he was a baby. Wow. Of course he was. He was gold, given gold, frankincense and myrrh when he was a baby. Now, that was a third world country. I don't think there were many but Jewish babies who were given gold, but he was, okay? And then he started up his ministry. Now, 
J Jesus actually was born into a middle class wealthy family. Now, how do we know that? This is really interesting, this. Jesus was born into a wealthy middle class family because Jesus, if you remember, when he was at the age of 12, they took him to the, his mum and dad, Joseph and Mary, took him to the temple, right? And he sat down for three days and talked to the, the Sanhedrin, the scribes and the Pharisees. And they wanted to talk to this young guy because they were going to book him to go into the yeshiva. That's the, the Jewish Bible class, yeah. Bible study. Now, they were very posh people. They wouldn't talk to... How, how do you like it? There's a sort of... Um, I can't think of the word. They were very posh. They were very careful who they spoke to. They didn't okay. talk to lower-class people. They okay. would talk to upper-class, wealthy people. They had a hierarchy exactly. sort of thing in That's place. Exactly. That's the word. They had a hierarchy. And they were impressed by Jesus' knowledge. And also, they knew that he came from a wealthy, well-to-do family. And we know that Jesus was wealthy and well-to-do. When he started his ministry, he wore a seamless outfit. His, he wore a seamless tunic. Now, I don't have a seamless tunic, and nor do you. You know, Jesus was five foot eleven, according to the according to the Shroud of Turin. And to make a seamless outfit, you have to have uh, like a mannequin, and you 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 weave this um, this material onto a, a mannequin that looks like Jesus. And it took several months, and that was an expensive piece of cloth, right? Wow! <laughs> but then we know how much money he used to carry around with him. Do you know how much money he used to carry around with him? No, you tell me. Because <laughs> <laughs> he used to take a lot of money around with him. Of course he did. He took a lot of money around with him. Because um, if you go to Mark chapter 6, they're about to feed 5,000 women, children, 5,000 men with women and children besides. So 5,000 men, 5,000 women, and let's say lots of kids as well. So maybe 20,000 people. And if you read it carefully... It says, what, what they say is that uh, the disciples said, Master, shall we spend 200 denarii on feeding this crowd of 20,000 people? That was a financial question. It, it wasn't anything spiritual. It was purely finance. Master, a, a denarius was a day's wage. Shall we spend eight months' wages feeding this crowd of people? Wow. Right. Now, let's say, let's, let's bring that up to date for our viewers, OK? Let's say that, uh, I, know, I know it isn't quite right, but let's say an average man's wage in the United Kingdom is 24 grand, 24,000 pounds. Yeah. What they were saying, very simply, is, Jesus, you're the boss. Shall we go and spend 16,000 pounds right now and feed this crowd? That's what they were saying. Wow. See? Wow. And he said, no, do a miracle. But the point is, they asked a simple financial question. Now, you've got to know something, is that Jesus obeyed the law. Now, we don't have, we're not under the law. We don't have to tithe, by the way. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, it says, e each man should, should give as he has decided. So we're not under the law. But Jesus was under the law. Now, not many people know it, but in Amos 4, verse 4, it says, tithe every three days. Wow. Amos 4.4, it says, tithe every three days and give offerings every on the other days. So the disciples were quite used to Jesus giving away large sums of money. So for him to give away 16,000 pounds, they'd seen it three days ago. <laughs> they saw it three days before that. Yeah. They saw it three days before that, and they'd been seeing it for three and a half years or however long into the ministry it was. So if the 16,000 was a tithe, you tell me how much money was in the, in, in the whole, whole amount. 16,000 was 10%. Yeah. How much money was he carrying around with me? That's serious. That's 160,000. He was, he was carrying 160,000 with him. That's serious. Of course he was, yeah. Wow, but then, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> that, but then there are people who this, ask this question all the time. They say, was Jesus a carpenter or yeah. a builder? No, 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 no. The word is tecton. We've got an English word called architect. Architect. Okay. Archi means master, and tecton comes from the Greek, which means builder. He was a builder, and he always was a builder, and he's a builder right now. Now, it says in, it says in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made, created by him, but nothing was made that was made without him, right? I haven't got it quite right, but you know what I mean. Yeah. John 1.1. 1, 1. Right. Okay, so Jesus made everything. He was the master architect of the universe. And last week, we were talking about creation, weren't we? Yeah. Now, he, who's, the, who's the creator of the universe? His name is Jesus. He's an, he's a, an architect, a master builder.